first positive case of COVID-19 has been identified in Washington. The NBA has announced it will be suspending its season. A countrywide shutdown may be looming. Madison Square Garden will be closing its doors for all of this month. Will be canceling the Thomas Red 2020 tour will be suspended. Dr. Fauci, the University of Miami, will be closing its doors. COVID is here. In one or two words, what was your first thought or reaction to hearing about the COVID-19 lockdown? Scared, you know. What now? Shock. Terrified. Why? I didn't know what to expect, and I was afraid of the future. I didn't know what to do, what was going to happen, what the future or anything was. Being a musician, the first thing that came to mind was what are we going to do about shows all, all my livelihood is is live performance it's being in the studio with people uh and i was just concerned about how i'm going to do that how am i going to feasibly be in a room with a bunch of musicians when i'm not allowed to be in a room with people or have to stand six feet apart it was just uh it was it was a scary thing to think about you know being an artist the industry just completely shut down i've never seen that before and especially as somebody a college student and a college musician who was already at the time struggling to figure out what they were going to do. And it was very, very intense and stressful to all of a sudden watch the world shut down around me. So I just kind of thought like, what now? It threw it down the drain, really. It it decimated it. it. It took a lot of people out of the workforce. It took a lot of people out of the industry. It took a lot of money out of the industry. It was, it was really hard. It was really hard to watch because a lot of recording artists nowadays get locked up into these monster agreements with labels where they don't really make a lot of, um, they don't make a lot of money back from their recordings because so much of it gets sucked up by the label. So they make their personal revenue through live performances and not being able to do that through them for a loop because they had a hard time getting the money to put food on the table and go and pay for their necessities. Um, Stagehands were out of work, booking agencies were out of work, artist managers were out of work because the artists weren't performing. It was, it's a part of the industry that I really care about because I like connecting with people, connecting music with people and it, it threw it all away. Music is such a collaborative thing and with social distancing and all these protocols, it, it makes it such a different experience with like bell covers and masks and limited people in a room and you know, to freshen out the air. So there's definitely lots of changes. Um, making sure that the proper precautions did not affect the way you played was really hard. Um, any sort of personal protective equipment that went on your instrument manipulated your sound to some degree. So figuring out how to create a good performance that's still high quality and still keeping everybody safe was always an issue. So those are probably the biggest uh, challenges we ran into was just the combination of keeping our sound um, as high quality as it could be in addition to keeping everybody safe from the pandemic. Trying to do ensembles was very difficult. Uh, for one of my ensembles in a smaller rehearsal space, we actually had to split up the rehearsals so that only half of us were in the room at a time, which for a band, that's it's impossible. Producing the same kind of tone, the same amount of consonant sounds that gets through to sing lyrics, that was really, that was a weird learning curve that we all had to get accustomed to. Uh, but as a performer, I'm now finally getting back to being able to look at the, the faces of the people I'm playing on. Because a lot of a lot of how I interact musically is by looking at what people are doing, whether it's their hands, which was the easy part, but looking at their faces, seeing how they react, how how they react to certain musical things I'm doing on my instrument, and vice versa, they react to me, 
that where you're losing an entire musical sense when you can't see someone's face. You don't know what's going on inside their head when they're playing something. It was just a matter of adaption. It was very nice that it wasn't just like, you can't perform anymore. We found ways to work around it, which was challenging and frustrating at times for sure, but it was also a little bit relieving to even be like, okay, this is still very much a thing that is happening, but there are ways that we can still do our art around it and present you know, our craft to people. Music is a very interpersonal thing, and a lot of the nuances of music and playing with musicians happens from being in the room. So trying to do a bunch of that stuff online, like music classes online was difficult. I'm music engineering, so my, my engineering classes online were difficult because it's a lot easier for most students, including myself, to learn when a teacher's there in person explaining stuff for you. Most of my studies are very tactile and very someone showing me how something works and playing something and analyzing it. And that's really hard to do through a computer screen. So that was definitely a challenge with learning specifically. It's how do you adapt the education that has been so hands-on for so long to a mode where you can't physically be with each other. It's, it was difficult adjusting to having to play music. We had lessons online. We had to adjust to doing ensembles online even. I was in a group that we had uh, Valerie Coleman as our coach and she's a composer. So she wrote music specifically for playing on Zoom. So that was an interesting way to adjust to um, doing music on school online. Person, there's an economy of time when it comes to people streaming music. Of there are only so many hours in a day. There are only, there's only so much time that any individual has that they want to donate to listening to music. Whether that's in the car, in the shower, while they're eating lunch, whether while they're just sitting there quietly trying to relax. There's only so much of that time, and everyone getting sent home grew how much time there was in the day, so people spent more time streaming. People who missed live music that didn't get to consume it live would sit at home and stream it more, um, which was good in that aspect. COVID definitely increased streaming because that was the only place that people could access music because there was no live music. So it definitely shifted the focus of the industry, realizing that streaming was a viable place for revenue. So it was beneficial for the streaming spaces that COVID hit because of the increase of revenue. People listened to a lot of music on TikTok. People streamed a lot more music on Spotify and Apple Music. Tidal got a bit bigger. People started listening to the radio just a little bit more. Podcasts and podcasts about music got bigger. But it, none of that, not a lot of that success really bled into live. For me specifically, since most of my performance is live, it was definitely a challenge and it definitely changed the way I viewed what I do. And I realized that, you know, obviously, you know, I still want my livelihood to come from live performance. That's what I love to do. But, you know, I would be remiss to just ignore the digital side of stuff. So I think there was a small silver lining to the pandemic in the fact that it made us realize just how powerful, like, the digital music community can be. Music being shared digitally skyrocketed so much during the pandemic, it made it a lot easier for some people to get noticed. This might be a hot take, but I think that it kind of leveled the playing field because everybody can make an account on TikTok and go upload a video and the algorithm will treat you equally. It doesn't matter how much money you have or what city you live in, but, and, and that shifts the balance of power from five years ago where you would if you're a singer songwriter, you'll pack up your guitar and you'll go move to Nashville because that's the only place you think you can get noticed. Or you'll go move to New York City or you'll go live in LA and then you'll get there and try to get found. Um, people were getting scouted out of their bedrooms, which I think was really great. It gave a lot of people 
it, it opened a lot more doors for them that would not have otherwise been opened if if COVID didn't put all of us at home on our laptops and our phones. The pandemic hit in conjunction with the increase of TikTok because TikTok has become the place for artists to emerge. And a ton of artists that have emerged, like Avery Lynch, have come from the TikTok sphere. And they would not have been noticed without the pandemic because they were at home writing music, just coming up with creative content that they could use and create um, their own work during that time. So COVID definitely created a different path for artists to emerge. And I think it honestly allowed more people just to have the opportunity. The recording studios had even heavier guidelines than I think the, uh, the ensembles did and the rehearsals did. Um, and the, the purpose of a recording studio is to get the best possible recording. And telling a vocalist they have to sing on a recording with a mask is, is backwards. That's, it's muffling the sound. It's, it's not allowing me to yield the best possible product in a recording studio. Uh, you know, people tried to do the the Zoom thing with band and have everyone play on mute, but from what I've heard, it just nothing really uh, worked that way. So people kind of had to switch gears a little bit and focus more on composition and listening elements opposed to playing, which kind of set back a lot of people. I remember when I was doing uh, field experience last semester, we had to pretend like the third graders were first graders because they didn't have that musical foundation. So it really just set music education back a little bit. We switched to something called telepractice or telepractice health, which is giving music therapy to clients online, which is a humongous shift considering that music for up until now has been all in person. Obviously there's recorded music, but the best effect is in person and transitioning to platforms like Zoom kind of um, took a damper on that, but we've adapted and we've overcome um, I'm just glad like we're kind of seeing a little bit back to normal. Teachers are forced to have a backup plan in case everything goes on Zoom. And that's also something that they're encouraging the music education students to think about now. It's not even just a pandemic is teachers going into the field need to be ready for to switch to remote learning like that. They just need to have these types of backup plans. Um, so just know how to work Zoom and make sure that whatever lesson you're planning can or curriculum you're planning can easily switch to that kind of format. I think in the next couple of years, assuming that the world doesn't come crashing down again, we're gonna see a huge rise in live concerts that are gonna come back, just like what we remember from a few years ago. Because not only do people in the industry wanna bring that back, to bring back the revenue, just to have fun, a lot of artists really miss actually meeting their fans and not just seeing them as data points on their Spotify pages or whatever. But I think people miss it. I think people really miss seeing a performer get up there and have fun and deliver the music and tell the story that really can't happen over a YouTube video or over a recorded song. So I think in the next few years, it'll shift back to something that's familiar, but in the long term, I think the live industry specifically is going to learn how to be more resilient against outside disruptors like COVID that could have torn it down so quickly. I think there's going to be a much more, there's going to be a greater emphasis on multimedia presentations of live concerts where, you know, people can go to the live show, but also people can sit at home and watch the show as well. I think that this pandemic allowed us to explore the telepractice um, option. So that allows music therapists to gain better opportunities to see more clients, which is great because all we want to do is help people. And also, now that we're going back to in person, we see what that is like, what that pandemic um, lifestyle was. And we know we don't want to go back to that. We're going to be safer. We're going to be cleaner. We're going to be more protective of our, of our, um, I don't know, our cleanliness. And like, that's a good thing to learn from this pandemic. So we learn, we adapt, and then we overcame. You know, the, the whole world and the whole country even is in different places with this pandemic. So some people are back to normal, some people aren't. Um, but 
there will be a time where music will be thriving again in schools and hopefully that'll be soon.